Willie's instinct for leadership made him Disney's choice to direct The Jungle Book. A movie that blended action and personality as well as animation ever had. And we used an orangutan in Jungle Book because that's uh, actually what Rudyard Kipling had in his, uh, in his Jungle Book story. But of course we took a great deal of liberties with it. Willie took Kipling's orangutan and combined it with Louis Prima's voice to create a unique and zany character. Crazy. I'm not as crazy as you are. Put me down. You, you cut that out. Cool it, boy. Unwind yourself. Then something else that moved caught his sensitive eye. Louis would always uh, bring his band down in a serpentine and walk, walk down through the audience and in between the aisles even. And he'd do the, the, the horn at the lead of it and the, and the musicians all following him. It was always a grand finale to his act and we, we, we kept that. For the voice of Mowgli, the man cub, Willie had to look no further than his own backyard. His son, Bruce, had the perfect pitch for the part. There's another fellow, another small boy that had been involved in the, doing the voice, voice for Jungle Book, who came back one afternoon with a voice that was three octaves lower, and uh, all of a sudden they needed somebody in a big hurry, and I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. He was natural, and that's what we wanted. And uh, he was still in that uh, awkward stage, shall we say, that really made him a, a small boy. And I went for personality, uh, strong characterization, strong voices that fit the, the, the character. The strongest personality in the Jungle Book belongs to Baloo the Bear. Hey kid, you need help. And old Baloo's gonna learn you to fight like a bear. Now come on, I'm gonna show you. We'd gone through a whole, a whole lot of guys and some were obviously trying to be funny and this and that and, and finally Walt came back and he had been at Palm Springs to a party where Phil Harris had been there. He says, why don't you try Phil Harris? Gee, some of the animators said, Phil Harris in a, in a Rudyard Kipling film? And Walt says, why not? Yeah. Once we got Phil over there and we told Phil not to be a bear, but to be Phil Harris, he got it in front of the mic, and he just tore that thing apart. Under Willie's direction, the animators could get practically any personality into a bear's body, from the bouncing balloon to the gentle Winnie the Pooh. Oh, hello. Am I glad to see you? It's more friendly with two. Now, you go that way, and I'll go this way. That was a whole different kind of bear. That was a whimsy. That was a uh, almost a teddy bear brought to life, and uh, uh, had nothing to do with trying to uh, emulate or get real bear movement. Finally, Willie co-produced The Fox and the Hound, in which a grizzly bear brings the film to its dramatic climax. Well, in The Fox and the Hound, there was a bear, too. And he was, uh, he was treated as a real bear. There, there was really no personality in the bear. Of course, he never talked, which would have ruined him, I think. But he was treated as a real live bear, and I think the picture would have been a little, well, no, not a little, it would have been quite flat without that kind of a climax. <laughs> From 1933 to 1981, the best action sequences in Disney films were either animated, directed, or produced by Wooly Ratherman. In The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, we, we did a, a chase with a headless horseman. And uh, 
it, it had all the vibrant guts potential that you could want. And again, I just used the start with one drawing and keep going and see what happens. I'm basically action-oriented and uh, like to get to the extreme of things. I kind of like danger. It's a thrill, and I think it's something everyone should experience once in a while to wake themselves up. I think I always enjoyed uh, a climax, a, a fight, uh, uh, because it, uh, it stirred my emotions when I was doing it. And I'm sure that if it stirred my emotions, it would stir the emotions of an audience to a very high point. <laughs> Willie had a whale of a time animating Monstro in Pinocchio. Of course, the whale was just just a huge, big animal. And, uh, and the, even though the faster it moves, the slower it takes for all that weight to, to turn around. But uh, also, the way you get the, the size of it is because you got a little cricket that's right by his eye. And then you, you have this huge expanse that gets bigger. This fight scene from Lady and the Tramp reveals another of Woolley's methods of keeping audiences on the edge of their seats. I think it's so effective in, in action sequences if you can stop for a minute because, again, it's just too much, too much to absorb. Sure, you know, somebody's getting the hell beat out of them, but it's when you stop for a minute and there's that... that confrontation that's, that's, that's so vicious that when it starts again then then uh, it gives the audience a, a little a little joke <laughs> And in Sleeping Beauty, Willie directed the fight scene between the prince and the dragon. Something's happening all the time of a, of a life and death nature in this sequence. The prince jumps over the, over the, the drawbridge because it's, it's destroyed by the evil queen. He rides just a short distance, and when he gets to the castle, up comes the, the thorn, and there's the next big, big... Uh, thing he has to chop his way through he no sooner does that, does that and she she blasts him with the dragon's fire i know when i first showed it uh, some of the guys criticized, well, how'd the, how'd the prince get up there and all those things? And, uh, but Walt liked it because it kept driving, driving, driving all the time. I think one of the things that was interesting to me, all through that sequence, I tried to get everybody to think that the prince was going to get killed. Uh, we didn't, you know, theoretically, we didn't know. In other words, you were driving to kill that prince all the way through. But that's what I mean is, that, that it progresses and builds and builds and builds in excitement until, until man, it, uh, if you can't, haven't got anywhere else to go, then stop it. Stop it right there and do the killing.